Let's talk about the upper soul. Let's talk about the upper soul. So this whole Marlena, Kate, Kayla, this whole ordeal. Now I'm okay with y'all playing with them. You know, pretending like they dead, bringing them back, rescuing them. Why y'all leave poor Steve like that? Now I understand y'all wanted Steve to go on a whole adventure to find his sweetness or whatever. I understand that. But why couldn't they all come back to each other, to reunite with each other together? Why is it so separate? Basically, John got his ending. Steve's still in limbo talking to a crazy person trying to get information on where Kayla is. We still don't know where Kate is. Kate can be dead, shot, you know, hurt, injured. We don't know where Kate is. How does John get his happiness? Steve's still in limbo. Kate, we don't know. We don't know the whereabouts of where she is. Like, that's kind of messed up. You know, I'm all here for John and Marlena reuniting. You know, I'm all for them letting the family know that, that she's alive and well. I'm all cool with all that. But don't half ass a story like that. Like, that was kind of messed up. And then at the end, Kayla somehow gets both phone, makes a phone call to Steve first. Steve didn't answer because he's trying to get answers from Megan. She calls um Stephanie. Stephanie answers answers the phone. And she like, Mom, are you okay? Mom, is that you? Like, really? So y'all gonna leave us on the cliffhanger like that, and y'all basically gonna let John and Marlena, you know, have they time together, but y'all kinda half-assed it with the, you know, having the storyline separate like that, like, I understand Bo wanna do his own thing, I know that y'all want him to do his own thing, find his legacy, you know, get, you know, whatever he working on in his brain, cause I, I, I still think he brainwashed, so, I understand, but why do it like that though, like, I don't get it, but okay, y'all do stuff for a reason, and I know y'all wanted to belong this storyline, so I kind of get it, why y'all wanted John to find Marlena so easily, Steve, I mean, Bo happened to find his sister, then he takes her off on an adventure, she don't want, don't want, no, any, don't want no parts of it, so I kind of understand it, but it was kind of, you know, it's an end for me, but I'm enjoying it, either way I'm enjoying watching it, I guess, but yeah, I don't like that at all, not even much one bit, like, I'm here for the reunions, but don't give us half reunions like that. That was like a bad show that y'all try to revive back with just one reunion besides three reunions. Or better yet, two reunions. And somehow Kate come in later on or, you know, the next day after or the next, you know, a, a couple of days down the road, come back home like... That don't make no sense, but okay days. Y'all do stuff for different reasons, y'all like the belong stuff y'all like to play around with stuff too much and i'm hoping y'all taking this storyline with with um kayla and Bo in the right direction not a bad direction and it makes sense and that uh, you know it ain't a crazy storyline because as of right now i don't get it uh, for real i don't get it he's still brainwashed but not really brainwashed but he want to do his own thing and he needs kayla there and he's in victor old house and want to start over with his own life his own legacy holding his sister hostage hostage why i guess she want kayla to be the mad scientist dr Roth. At this point, I'm confused. I don't know what's going on, but okay, though. Um, I still say um, Kate not dead. She'll show up eventually. Like, it's kind of bittersweet. Yes, Chad wanted to hear that. You know, Kayla's alive. Marlena alive. What about Kate? And you know that blank that we don't know what happened to her. Um... They still look well. Steve still looking for uh, Steve still looking for um Kayla, um Marlena home. We don't know where Kate at. 
it's just like a whole lot going on in that storyline that shouldn't be going along. But uh, like I said, oh, okay. Well, I guess I have to run with it. We're going to have to run with it and wait till days decide they want to reveal stuff piece by piece. I hope they don't make us hope. I, make, I hope they don't make us wait weeks to do that. But more than likely days, they're going to make us wait weeks. Of course they are. They're going to end up maybe about this time next week. Um, Kayla might end up finding a way to escape or having her phone tracked and break. I mean, and Bo and probably Steve or whoever gonna have a showdown. Um, it's gonna be a whole lot of mess coming. I, I, I feel it coming. You know, with days, it's always some mess coming. Um, Megan. What makes you think, you, you know what, you play too much. Now, you know you call, you know there's no running for you. You trying to make deals in the immunity and all that, like, I don't want to be here, I want to be here. I don't want to be there, I want to be here. I don't want to be thrown off on somewhere where I'm going to be gone and forgetting. We want to forget and we want we want you gone and forgetting. To be honest with you, we, we, we kind of want that for you. Cause I didn't had enough of you already, and you can't fight or def or defend yourself. Like I said, nice plan, Megan. I'm gonna give you your props. You had a nice plan going, had a nice thing going. Where was your goons at? That's the only problem I got with your plan. Where was your goons or your hired or your hired henchmen? Henchmen? Where are they? Where were they? You didn't think enough to hire them, but you gonna have a mad scientist bringing both back, thinking that you gonna have a relationship with him. You gonna have um, Kate Marlena and uh, Kate Marlena and Kayla there calling themselves doing stuff for you, trying to use them as lab rats. Like, where's your goon? Where was your goons? Better yet. We gonna put an S to the goons. Where was your goons at? You had all this amount of money, but you didn't hire no goons. That was your first mistake right there. But I'm gonna let you have that one. Um, speaking of Kayla, I mean speaking of Stephanie. Stephanie, now that you know, oh Alex over here. Then basically keep you away from anything. Your mother is alive. You was pissed at him because you didn't get to say goodbye to your mother. So does that change anything between you and Alice? Or are you going to stay being, you know, stepmommy to two children? Are we going to go with Alice or are we going to stay with stepmommy or stepmama? That's all I want to know. Are we going to play stepmama or are we going to start off? Because you too young to be playing stepmama to somebody else's child. I'm just saying, you know, people okay with doing that, but I wouldn't want to play stepmama to somebody else's kids. I'm sorry. Not right now in this life form, but maybe younger, you know, we survive like, you know, 10, 20 years. You know what? I'm stuck with you, so I'm stuck with your kids. We all know that kids come with the package, so I guess you all in, I guess. I will give you props with that. You didn't let the kids intimidate you. You basically welcome them with open arms. They like you. You like them. You playing mommy. They scared of the, you dark. You They want you to read them books. They like you, so I, mm, I guess it's mommy then. You have fun with that, but... You can't be mad at Alex anymore because there's nothing to be mad about Alex. But knowing you and your messy behind, like I know you, you still probably going to be mad at that man. Knowing you, you still going to be mad. You still going to be mad. I got the $20, you going to be still mad. You ain't going to tell that man or you just going to pretend like that man on his ass. You might end up telling him, I got faith that you might end up telling him. But you're still going to be pissed. Somehow you're going to hold some type of grudge against that. So I ain't got too much faith in you until you show me otherwise. Because I already know who you are. I already recognize you. And I've been watching enough to see your schemes and your acts. So mm, we'll have to wait and see how you react. And we're going to have to wait to see if you're going to forgive Alice. Or you just going to 
let him or you gonna stay mad at him. We'll we will find out soon enough. Uh speaking of the Damaras. Nice plan, EJ, but it didn't work. I mean, we understand that you don't want Gabby any parts. You, we understand that you don't want Gabby in any parts of the Namera. I'm there with you. I wouldn't want her no parts of the anywhere near the Mera anyways. I wouldn't want her to be a part of it, whether it's by marriage or whatever. I'm with you on that. However, y'all got to come up with a better plan. Like, come on. And Gabby, you foolish for even falling for it. When the call showed up to your doorstep, to my idea, and like Lee said, don't nobody know about this. This just happened. How you know about it all of a sudden? And what possibly deal could you want to make with Gabby in the first place? Like it was obvious a setup, and Lee was dumb enough to fall for it, but ended up getting hit. Well, his jaw ended up. Where his jaw ended up falling and hitting the floor. So basically, it was a dumb, dumb idea. And EJ, I saw you do smarter. Like that whole plan and Gabby going along with it to have them little 20 seconds of a long time with Stephen for what? Stephen basically had to tell you that. It don't feel right. Something, scr something strange here. I feel like I'm getting set up. He kept on saying that you want to kiss on the man, want to have sex with the man, you want to fall right into the rabbit hole. So I got to give Stephen his props for realizing and recognizing that. Yeah, why would EJ and the call want to help me? Basically, we just got through playing a, a switcheroo game not even much a week ago, two weeks ago. Now, all of a sudden, Nicole and EJ want me to be with Gabby. And we already know how he feel about Gabby. And basically, he helping me have a Yeah, I mean, it was obvious when the jump. Stefan was smart enough. Gabby was, you know, foolish enough to go along with the plan. Thank God Stefan stopped her and got trash. I don't know how he... Maybe she do got feelings for Stefan. Cause I was surprised and shocked when she was uh, talking to um Rave, telling him if you got anything on rubbing it, you better do it and make sure it's ironclad because I don't want no repercussions, no repercussions from if it fails, I don't get to prosecute her and she end up throwing a lawsuit on me. So basically I was surprised and shocked to see her in the bed of all people, even though Stephanie could have got a random woman anywhere and pretended to be Gabby in the bed. Like I was surprised and shocked and that she actually had feelings with Stephanie. I'm like, oh, okay. Okay. I guess trash like a little power with her with her side of, you know, being on being on the right side of the law. I guess she like crossing lines and you know I I guess she like a little bad boy in her, I guess. I'm like, oh okay. Mm. So trash really do like that. Oh, okay. Good for you, I guess. If that's what turns you on, by all means, you have fun with it. I would have never thought that you are like Stephanie like that. Yeah, I saw y'all have interactions way. You went all hard eyes for him, but I didn't know it was that deep. But okay, go ahead, trash. You know what? You ain't going to never have him. But good luck. Good luck and have fun, I guess. Um... You see what I mean about bad children? Even though Chloe got off the hook but what she said about Brady and Kristen's daughter, this little grown thing then went, stole Brady phone, hired the whole Uber, went to the prison, cried and manipulated her way to see Kristen. And you wonder why I say Chloe didn't tell her no lies when she called her what she called her. Even though it was wrong, nasty, and rude, or whatever. You don't talk about people, children like that. As the shoe fits, wear it. I mean, that was enough to show you, like, are we really letting children ride around in Uber by themselves? Are we really letting kids in the prisons knowing what's. You know what? 
that's Brady and his little grown daughter, I guess, and Kristen. And the way she was talking, like, I come here. I want to I wanna know some information. What's this about? Basically, the letter Kristen wrote called Brady forced her hand to write, telling her that it's okay, lay off of Chloe. She cool. I'm okay with them dating. Leave her alone. She didn't understand it, didn't agree with it, so she basically had to go confront her mother about it. And took an Uber and went into prison crying and got her way. You know what? I'm still going to say it. Chloe ain't tell no lies when she said that about that little girl because it wasn't no lie. Brady could get mad about it or whatever, but it wasn't no lie. That is a little devil. I ain't told y'all a problem. If that problem child ever come out with a new movie, she will be the problem child. She won't be the boy version. She'll be the girl version. I remember during the problem child, there was also a girl that was doing the same thing to her father. That's her. But anyways, <laughs> excuse me. But anyways, though, let's move on. Um... Hope getting caught with her pants down by her daughter. Hope moving on with her life the best way she can. Her husband gone. She think Bo gone. Her life basically is over to her because Bo was her everything. She went and reunited with Harris. Like I said, the way he choked you. I'm not in the foreplay. I ain't into that foreplay choke, choking mess that you went to hope. I guess that what turned you on or show him that he love you. You can have all that choking and all that other kinky mess. I ain't into it. Whatever turns you on, I guess go right on ahead and have it. I basically hope got caught with her pants down by her daughter who's pregnant again with who well who's pregnant again they having another baby heading back to Salem look like um Robert gonna be playing double roles I'm guessing cause Alex and Alex not going anywhere no time soon Ben coming back so basically Robert Scott Wilson gonna be playing two roles which would be interesting to see, but he's going to be playing dual roles. Um, and plus, Sierra's pregnant again. Hope was all happy and excited about the news. Um, even though she wasn't really there for the firstborn, but she said she's going to be there for this born. Okay. We have to see how that works out for you. But yeah. You go ahead and do you, I guess, Hope. Uh, once you find out Bo alive, we're going to see how you're going to be there for Mr. Harrison or Harris. And um, basically, I got my confirmation that I heard Hope say, cuz, I was wondering what part of the family that boy was that gave Steve that information. So now we know that's her cousin. So, I'm happy to hear that because I was wondering how Hope calling him cuz. Y'all sure got a whole lot of cousins in Salem and around Salem and here and there and in the eyes. So I'm like, oh, okay. So, that's her, that's her cousin. Oh, okay. So, now it makes sense. Okay. Um, basically, that's about it. Um, I like what they doing. I just want to know where Kate is. That's all I want to know at this point. Um... Basically, we know they're all alive besides Kate. I just want to know where Kate is. That's all I want to know. When are we going to see Kate? When is Kate going to reveal herself? She might be shot. She might not be shot. We ain't seen Dr. Roth yet. So, who holding her hostage? Dr. Roth? I wouldn't be surprised or shocked if they show her. Are we going to a dark alley or a dark building and see Dr. Roth holding Kate hostage? nursing her back to hell cause you know it's with the whole scrambling you know Kayla stabbed him with his syringe and um stabbed him with his syringe and then both stabbed Megan so where Dr. Roth at basically he ran and got away Megan did it 
So, is Dr. Roth holding Kate hostage? I wouldn't be surprised nor shocked if he is. Like, for real, for real, I wouldn't. But anyway, so y'all, that was the episode. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. I'll see y'all later. Oh, Paulina and the Robinick. I forgot all about them. Mm. Let's go ahead and knock them out. I didn't even write no notes about them, but... Chanel gonna end up falling for that girl Talia, and I think I remember seeing her on uh, another soap opera, or she was on Days Before. Me. I can't tell which one yet, but Chanel gonna end up dating that girl, and the way she helped her mom out when Pauline was having that panic attack, oh Chanel gonna end up dating her, even though she lied to Chanel telling her that you know um. Well, she lied to her, not telling her she was a doctor. Then had to come clean while Paulina finally put her foot down and basically and basically trying to stop Robinick over here for harassing and bothering her and her daughter. So long ago, you should have did it early, and she wouldn't have got away with all this. I don't think Robinick trashed your office, but somebody else did. Um. Yeah, you way overdue, Paulina, with the whole, you know, wanting to finally do something about it. I will give you that. I will give it to you that you got it document, documented, documented of her harassing you. I will give you that. Everybody can contest her, you know, her, her, her harassing you. Nicole, everybody, basically, you got, and you really serious about this, you can end up possibly getting a restraining order against, you know, that thing over there. But I don't think you're going to take it that far, but I would have, I, I, after the loss, well, after the criminal charges were dropped, I would have stopped to her right then and there. She went in there, came to me, harassing me, bothering me, telling me I'm going to pay. Oh, I'm going to get this. Oh, I'm going to get that. I'm going to steal your life savings and all that. It's about money, trust me. Now, we know when people, when, you know, when people have a death in the family, we all know they go through something. She's going through something. And the only way she can find a way to get over her mother and her father's death is money. Ain't nobody dumb. She talking about it ain't the money. It ain't the money. Yes, it is the money. Because that's the first number one thing people go after when the death in the family is money. So, we already know it ain't about, you know, re 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 we know we, we already know it ain't about retribution. We already know it's about you want this and you know Paulina got money and you basically going out of it. That's why you saw Eric up like that. Telling him about an art gallery, thinking that you were going to use Chanel sweet bits to turn that into an art gallery. Thinking that you was going to do that, but it backfired in your face. It's about the money. Stop lying. And we ain't buying it. But anyways, though, y'all, that was the episode. Don't forget to like, share, comment, and subscribe. I'll see y'all later. Enjoy the rest of y'all night or evening. Have a good weekend, and I'll catch y'all later. Bye.